So I don't know how this looked for you guys on TV, but live, it was actually much better than I expected. But first, let me tell you a little story about SummerSlam. You know how they say um, people have been confiscating signs to hold up? Yeah, they actually did that with me. And I don't get it. Tell me what's wrong with this sign. Why would they want to confiscate this sign from me? Could someone explain that to me? Anyway, that's just a little story. I don't know what everyone else thought of SummerSlam, you know, before the main event. But I thought before CM vs. CM Punk, this pay-per-view was just, it just dragged on for too long. Okay, so the first matchup we had was a filler six-man tag team match with Rey Mysterio, John Morrison, and Kofi Kingston vs. Miz, R-Truth, and Alberto Del Rio. Pretty solid, so no, no problem with this. Yeah, you're right. This was a pretty damn solid match. The only person that I was actually cheering for from the face side was Rey Mysterio because Rey Mysterio doesn't deserve to be booed. The crowd was actually really into this match. They were cheering everyone. They literally cheered every single person in this match. Nobody got booed at all. Not the heels, not the faces. I was the only one booing any of the faces. Everyone got cheered in this match. And it was actually a pretty damn exciting match. I'll give it to all of them. This next match is what put me to fucking sleep. Mark Henry versus Sh Sh Sheamus. I expected way more from these guys. They really put me to fucking sleep. In the middle of the match, I was just laying there with my eyes closed, hoping this matchup was over. And then when I heard Mark Henry's team, I was like, oh, thank God, it's over. The build-up was great. It's just that if the matches aren't going to freaking produce, then why the fuck still have this? Mark Henry wins by count-out. So this means that the rivalry is going to continue, even though this match was fucking dreadful. You know what, you're right. This was actually one of the matches that I wanted to go up, get popcorn, get t-shirts and whatnot. But I couldn't, and now I wish that I did, because I didn't take the time to take the break during this match. I ended up missing the fucking Bellas later on, which pissed me the fuck off once I found out. Like, damn it, all this fucking time, wanting to see the Bellas, and I fucking missed them. The next part was uh, CeeLo Green performing, which is actually the highlight of the show up to that point. Obviously, it's going to be the highlight of the show, you fucking idiot. Nikki Bella was in it. And it still pisses me the fuck off that I didn't get to fucking see it. God damn it, I had to sign for them and everything. Fuck! Fuck WWE for making me want to take a fucking break during this shit. We had, um, Daniel Bryan versus Wade Barrett in another match that I predicted would happen and did happen. Now, here's what I'm shocked at. Wade Barrett actually won the damn match. I mean, it was very, very good match. The crowd was dead for it, so what? Like, seriously, if you guys can't appreciate a good match, then just fucking go kill yourselves, seriously. And Wade Barrett wins. Now, hopefully, I'm hoping that this leads to Wade taking the money in the bank briefcase off of Daniel Bryan. Alright, now you say the crowd was dead. From someone that I was actually in the crowd, it... This match pretty much got as big of a reaction as it could have gone. I mean, the crowd was cheering throughout every sp and the crowd was actually pretty damn behind Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan actually got a decent reaction. Wade Barrett, not so much. I was practically the only guy giving him a standing ovation. But, I mean, what do you expect? The match was pretty much hosed most of the time. What do you expect? It's to go like, yeah, yeah, twist that rest hold, yeah. And I'm surprised I wasn't the only guy booing Daniel Bryan, telling him to go back to ROH, and telling him he doesn't deserve to be world champion. That was pretty funny. And he was looking directly at me when I was flipping him off, which was also pretty funny. Oh, yeah, and Edge came back for some and then just completely turn on Christian. Now this was I thought was going to be just a swerve where Edge was just going to come back and just cost Orton the match. But no, we did not hear from Edge again. You know what? Just fuck Edge. Randy Orton versus Christian. Now personally, I think this feud is like dragged on a little too long because it's just been freaking Christian just jobbing, 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 jobbing to Randy Orton. What else are we going to have but Randy Orton winning the World Heavyweight Championship? Now, per I, this was a very enjoyable match. It was a great match. Don't get me wrong here. The only problem I had with this is the winner. What I'm going to say about the World Heavyweight Championship match is, I'm glad there's other people that were around my era that hated Orton just as Whatever, he wins, he gets cheered. It was a fun match. They pulled out some pretty damn good stuff. Randy Orton finally broke the announcer table. But you know, they needed to have a reason to continue this to where Randy Orton was going to be at Night of Champions. Like I said, you knew they weren't just going to end this year. This was going to go on to Night of Champions and go on to Hell in a Cell. This shit just won't end. It's like Jeff Jarrett versus Kurt Angle at this point. The championship, Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix. Now, personally, here's what here's what I said. I said that Mick was going to turn heel 
on Kelly Kelly and joined Beth Phoenix and Natalia to Kelly. That's exactly what I was saying. I was getting excited. I was like, yes, my prediction's gonna come true. It Kelly, fucking Kelly, wins with a roll-up. This, but I guess that all the people are right. She really is the John Cena of the freaking divas. Oh, let me tell you something. This match right here was the highlight of the freaking night because I was booing the hell out of Kelly Kelly. All the months of built up frustrations that I've had toward her. Bash her for being such a fucking whore, for sleeping around with Justin Gabriel, was he Slater, was fucking Dolph Ziggler, and just threw it all in her fucking face. And what was great about this was, I don't know if this came out on TV, but she actually turned around and she looked at me, she looked directly at me because I was the only one doing anything in that time. She looked directly at me, she shrugged her shoulders and saying, what, what, what are you going to do? And that just made my night completely worth it. And then I started chanting, you can't wrestle, and she started pulling out wrestling moves. And it was just a overall good time. Exciting thing of the night, John Cena versus CM Punk. Now at this point, uh, when I saw the thing, I was like, I was fucking done with this pay-per-view. I was thinking, dude, just fuck this pay-per-view. I should just go troll people. And just saw like how exciting the atmosphere for this match was. I thought I'd give it a chance. And then like the in-ring action turned out to be better than it was at Money in the Bank here. And uh, we all predicted Triple H was going to turn heel on CM Punk. Did not happen. I was probably the only person that wasn't standing and cheering throughout this entire match. All I was doing was pretty much just saying, hurry up and screw him, hurry up and screw him, we know there's a screw job coming, just do it already. Oh boy, did I feel stupid when there wasn't a screw job. Happened. But what did happen was after CM Punk won, even though Cena's foot was on the rope though, um, Kevin Nash comes out for no apparent reason and just gives him a jackknife. I'm wondering, are we going to get an explanation for this? And then, for no freaking reason, here comes out Virtual Dare, Rio cashes in Money in the Bank, who I thought was Daniel Bryan for a second. Rio cashes in, and he is Money in the Bank. He is the new WWE Champion, mark out moment of the year. Del Rio is your new WWE Champion. I could not be more excited for this shit. So overall, I don't know how it looked on TV, but the live experience was freaking awesome. So I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. So just great pay-per-view overall, just in my opinion. Anyways, it's been MTO with MTO Omar Reviews. Uh, an okay pay-per-view, saved by the main event. has been the other guy for the MTO Omar Reviews. Yada, 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 blah, 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 good and bye.